it has been a world with a lot of problems for many years, many, many years. And you could say, frankly, for many centuries. I mean, you look at what goes on. But certainly you want protection. And they didn't have any protection. They had a maniac walk in, and they didn't have any protection. And that is just so sad to see. So sad to see. The results could have been much better. It is a very, very, it's a very difficult thing for me to stand as president and to watch any of this go. You know, before I ran for office, that I'd watch instances like this with churches and other things. I'd say, what a shame, what a shame. But it's even tougher when you're the president of the United States and you have to watch this kind of a thing happen. It is so sad to see. So we'll see you at the, uh, with the young farmers. And President Trump now en route to that event. We're going to bring it to you live uh, as soon as we get that. But for now, I want to bring in more about the president's remarks. White House columnist for The Hill, Niall Stanich, he joins me now by phone. Niall, you actually wrote a column looking at the divisiveness in this country. And you said in that article that it precedes President Trump. It does, certainly. There's no question that there has been increasing polarization in this country dating back uh, decades. Um, obviously, polarization is one thing, actual acts of violence of the tragic type we have seen today, Rena, are, are different. But there, there is many people would assert a connection between the two, and that is where the problem arises. Now, we heard the president's remarks when he was asked by reporters whether this situation, this fatality, the deaths at the synagogue should push forward more tougher gun control legislation. And he said, no, there should actually be an armed guard inside that synagogue. That would have made a difference. How do you think that's going to be received, particularly by folks of the Jewish faith? I'm sure that many people will be upset about that. I have seen a number of people on social media and elsewhere talking about the fact that there are uh, many um, synagogues and other other um, uh, buildings that are in some way related to the Jewish faith that already have armed security guards of some kind. Um, more perhaps specifically to this instance today, obviously we know that three police officers were unfortunately shot uh, during this incident in Pittsburgh. So I, you put those two things together and I think the, the point is not so much that it is inherently a um, foolish or bad idea as the fact that I think it will strike many people as tonally off for something that the president might say in the immediate wake of these events. Now, we also talk about how one of the reporters actually mentioned it uh, very early on in the president's administration. Many people were hopeful that maybe he would be the one who could work something out with the NRA to deal with gun control. Has that hope completely faded? Largely, I think it has. I mean, his comments pertaining to armed guards and synagogues today were very parallel to his uh, belief or his call for increasing uh, security in schools after uh, tragedies regarding mass shootings in that regard. So it seems as if he has moved away from the idea of gun control laws. So what changed, Niall? Do you know why he went from one position to the other? Well, the NRA certainly exerted its political muscle behind the scenes and publicly criticizing him for comments that he made that seemed to be advocating for stricter gun laws. I recall there was a meeting at the White House, so the specifics elude me right now, Irina, after which he adopted a much more um, NRA-friendly position on this issue. So does this come down to votes, uh, having the NRA support? Is it that his base really believes so strongly in the Second Amendment they don't want anything, anything curtailing that? It's a combination, I think, of that belief among his base and the fact that the NRA remains a very well-organized lobby, a very well-organized organization willing to put considerable money into political races, uh, including, I, one might add, that it, it contributed considerable amounts of money to President Trump's initial bid to get elected in the first place. Now, if you could hang with us for a second, I want to also bring in Paul Violis. He's a CBS News law enforcement and security analyst. Paul, we know that a suspect has been apprehended, a 48-year-old mm. white male. I, I uh, Jackie, excuse me, we're hearing... We have got a press conference, actually. Paul, uh, if you can stand by just a second, I want to take you here live. And this is, uh, remind me again, Jackie, exactly who we're hear, hearing right now. Doing what they have done to make us safe, to 
respond All right, so we're gonna listen quickly, in. so effectively to, to this tragedy. And I want to turn it over to Wendell. Wendell Hesrick, the City of Pittsburgh Public Safety Director. As the mayor mentioned, we've had a tragedy here today. The work of the first responders has probably prevented it from becoming much more uh, tragedy than what it is. The scene is very bad inside. There are, there are multiple fatalities. There are at least six injuries to include four police officers. The police officers' injuries at this time are non-life-threatening. The other individuals are critical and serious in nature. They were taken to three of the level one, level two trauma centers here in the city of Pittsburgh, that being Allegheny General, UPMC, and UPMC, U, UPMC Presby, and UPMC Mercy. At this time, I'd like to say that we have established a phone number with the assistance of the FBI for any questions from victims, families. Uh, that number is 412-432-4400. Once again, it's 412-432-4400. A victim's assistance and reunification center has been set up at Chatham College on Chatham campus at Berry Hall at 106 Berry Street. We will have brief counselors there as well as the Red Cross. Please allow about a half hour for the uh, final plans on establishment of that center. Um, however, there are individuals working to have it up and running as soon as possible. A further brief press conference will be held at the County Emergency Operations Center at 4 p.m. this afternoon, of which the elected officials and first responders will give you, as well as the FBI, will give you an update. At this time, this is being considered a federal violation, and the primary investigative agency will be the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I would like to personally thank the many uh, first responders that have responded to this incident today, to include the Pittsburgh Bureau of Fire, Pittsburgh Bureau of Police, the EMS, uh, Allegheny County Police, and FBI, ATF, and numerous others that uh, I don't even, can't even count how many first responders are here that are providing assistance. This will be a lengthy crime scene. We are asking people to st that don't need to be in this area, please stay away from it, uh, so that uh, both the investigators and first responders can do their job. I will emphasize at this time, there appears to be no active threat to the community, uh, this individual, that uh, we believe the subject that is responsible for this has been in taken in custody. That's all I have. Can you go over what happened? I don't, that's gonna be part of the investigation. On the injuries, uh, we believe six injuries, uh, four of which are police officers. So it's a total of six injuries. I will not discuss that yet until we are sure of the number. I don't. I don't want to get into that at this point. There's a lot of information. I'd be very cautious on what you hear and what you don't hear at this time. Like I say, we have numerous investigators here. I would ask that if anyone has any information regarding the investigation, that they also call that 412-432-4400, and that will put put you in contact with the FBI. Wendell, can you tell us what the situation was in there? How many people about were inside? I don't have that was answer. I, I do not want to give you, uh, my understanding was there was a service occurring. That is correct. Uh, however, we are setting up a, a very hard perimeter around the uh, crime scene. And we ask you know, individuals to stay away from that. So uh, there will be a very secure presence around the crime scene just to protect the integrity of the investigation. The person taken into custody, custody, did you see weapons recovered off this person? I don't want to get into that. I don't want to get into that. Uh, what, right now, what we have is one subject in custody from the scene. Whether or not, as all these investigations, you know, we have to look into every imaginable fact to find out if there is anyone else that's been involved in it. Is there any What's evidence of a bomb? I'm sorry? Is there any evidence of a bomb? There is not. Uh, explosive ordnance disposal teams went through the uh, through the scene and um, there is no evidence of 
any IEDs or any further threat. Wendell, for a moment there, you, you sounded very emotional. Uh, Hand was placed on the, your Tell me how you feel. It's a very horrific crime scene. It's one of the worst that I've seen, and I've been on some plane crashes. It's, it's very bad. All right, so What's his identity? I, I do not want to get into that. Uh, like I say, there's a very active investigation going on right now. Have you identified him? I'm sorry? Hear from him. You will hear from myself, uh, the SAC, uh, special agent in charge of the FBI, the U.S. attorney, as well as the uh, elected officials. A lot of moving parts today. What's the next step here? The next step is uh, secure the crime scene. The FBI has both assets from both Western Pennsylvania and from DC and route here. So they will be running the investigation and the crime scene with the support of both the Allegheny County Police and the city of Pittsburgh Police. I have no idea. I'd like to also mention the state police. Uh, you know, they've been instrumental in helping us out as well. As far as the injuries, right now we're at six injuries. Can you identify it's an active investigation. I mean, obviously we know who the gunman is, but we're not, I'm not gonna bring that up now. As I mentioned before, uh, this is a, falls under a hate crime, uh, being it's a Jewish synagogue, so it will be basically a federal investigation with the assistance of the locals, county, and state police. The shooter was taken to the hospital, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. It's a very horrific...